Hey guys, Brandon back with another FM Live. Uh, today we're gonna talk about air and aerodynamics. So specifically the various uh, engineering parts that we have on this car here and some that we've removed from this car. So as always, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them at the end of my little spiel here. So first question, why do you want aero parts in general? You want aero parts for more downforce and for less drag. So more downforce, downforce is what pushes the car into the ground to, have, to basically make it stick better. We've all seen race cars with giant wings and that kind of thing. Um, that's maybe not quite where we're going with this, but we're kind of going in that direction. So we're gonna try to decrease the lift and increase the downforce so that the car stays planted better in corners, uh, more stable handling, all that fun stuff. Now, drag, you always want as little drag as possible. If you could have zero drag, that would be grand. Not gonna happen. But that's the goal that we're aiming for. So, for all these aero pieces, uh, we are using the Varus engineering parts. Now, Varus engineering has been around for a while. We've been working with them for a long time. They make, they make very good parts and they design very good parts. Um, all of their engineering is extremely thorough. It's all done, this stuff is all done with CFD, computational fluid dynamics, so that everything is analyzed and tweaked and manipulated to be as good as possible given the constraints that, that they're working within. So um, I'm not gonna try to argue that they're the cheapest parts, but I will argue that they're the best parts. So put your money where your mouth is kind of thing. So. We have a few different parts here. Uh, we can start here. So these are the flat underbody panels. So these, you can see basically, probably fairly obvious, but the, the black parts are new and the silver parts are all on the car to start off with. Uh, front of the car is this way, top of the car is that way, as you have probably figured out. This sits underneath the oil pan this is a little bit behind that. Uh, and then this, I think, is basically right behind the tail shaft of the transmission. So this, you can see, it's not perfectly flat, uh, but it fills in the holes in between so that you get a smoother uh, underbody and less drag. Let's see, it is, I'm all out of order here. So it lowers the drag by 10 points. So. You can see it's a pretty easy install. It bolts in to these braces and then it also bolts into the chassis. Um, now bear in mind, you may have to tweak it a little bit to fit your specific exhaust. Um, you can see we have kind of contoured these a little bit for a little more clearance. So that's something you'll wanna watch out for. Also, it does not work with an automatic. So apologies for that. Otherwise, nice, easy install. A uh, little bit of a, of a wicker bill here to help pull the hot air out, because uh, this is where the exhaust is. I believe the cat is here and the, the secondary cat is here and the flange between the header and the mid pipe is right here. So we'll now work from front to back on the car here. So these are canards or dive planes. So you can probably buy them at Pet Boys for 20 bucks or something, uh, but not these. These are real carbon fiber. Uh, and they are very specifically designed and very specifically located for the ND Miata. Now these add 60 pounds of downforce to the car uh, and they take away 10 points of drag. Uh, and they actually do that by creating a vortex as the air comes up and helping pull the air out of, um, I'm not actually sure if it's the front or the rear or both, uh, but definitely one of the wheel wells. So that's how it actually, because these usually increase drag, not on this, they actually decrease the drag, which is pretty unusual. Now it is important to get these precisely located. So we include a template and that template gives you the bolt pattern for your stainless hardware uh, on the underside there. I don't know if you can get that, but, uh, but so that you know exactly where to drill the holes, also so that you know exactly where to put it to get it in the perfect place so that it's gonna work uh, exactly as design. So another thing we have are the hood louvers. So these are pretty slick. Uh, they are powder coated. They're not anodized. Uh, anodized, normal anodized hood louvers can fade long term. 
maybe it's kind of cool because it fades into kind of a gold color, but it's not going to be the color they came with. Not true with these. These are powder coated. Uh, you also may notice that there are no rivets. That's because there are actually studs pressed in here. So it's a cleaner look. You don't see any fasteners on the top. Uh, and it has a wicker bill here to create a low or, or enhance the low pressure, make it even more of a low pressure to suck the air out. So basically what these, these serve two purposes. One is promoting airflow through the heat exchangers. So when for ideal cooling, you want to cram as much air as possible into the front of the car, or as much air as you need anyway, but then you want to evacuate it out of the back uh, behind all the heat exchangers. Now, the hood is fairly well sealed uh, stock. There's not a ton of room underneath for the air to come out. So this is the way to get air out of there. So again, the more air you push through your heat exchangers, the better they can do their job. The other thing this does is it reduces the pressure in the engine bay, so it decreases your front end lift. Uh, one of the other neat things about this is that they actually will work with other gens as well. So uh, we've got a local guy here that actually used to work for us um, who has these on his NB and they work quite well. So we haven't tried them uh, on an NC or an NA yet, but I'm pretty sure they'll work fine. You may have to work around some under bracing, underhood bracing, uh, but otherwise, I think they would work and look quite good for that. So uh, let's see. Yep. So making sure I'm not missing anything here. All right. So we'll come around to the back. Uh, this is an awesome wing. It is not made by Varus. This is nine lives. Uh, not subtle, but extremely effective. But the Varus stuff is here. So this diffuser. So this is going to help suck air. Basically, the air is going to stay attached to this and come up here. So it's going to decrease the low pressure area behind the car. So there's going to be less drag that way. So you can kind of imagine on a stock car, the air is tumbling around back here. So it's kind of sort of like there's a parachute. There's, there's force pulling the car backwards. So that is drag. So with this, we're going to speed up the air underneath to give a little more, more downforce. Uh, and then we're going to bring the air up here to decrease that low pressure area in the back. This is not a full on gigantic race diffuser that requires us to cut out the trunk or anything like that. So there are limitations to its performance level, uh, but it does make a difference. Can't remember the numbers right now, so I will look at my notes. Um, fairly easy bolt on. A um, little awkward to get to some of the some of the hardware up in there, but really not too bad. Looks very slick, and again, designed with CFD and very functional. So, uh, this is another spot where you may need to do a little bit of trimming. Uh, our Hushomatic exhaust, for example, uh, the two tips are are wider across than the stock exhaust, so they'll interfere a little bit here. So you got to uh, kind of clean this up just a little bit there. So stuff not. Not complicated, but stuff to be aware of going into it. We've got some questions here. Uh, why don't we carry the Varus front splitter? Good question. Uh, it is a nice piece. Uh, we had one on this car for a long time, but it is a little awkward when you're constantly getting into the area underneath the engine. So we took it off because these things are on the lift all the time. Um, I am concerned about with with this stuff it's plastic so if you run into a, a parking thing you're going to scratch it up and that's about it uh, with that thing I'm, I'm a little more concerned about how it's going to survive uh, or if somebody kicks it or something like that it'll be fine for normal stuff but it's not as resilient as as a rubber like that but it's still a really good thing and it does balance out the arrow uh, well it does make a difference so awesome, they do sell that piece. Uh, why is it so expensive and what is it made of? I'm actually not sure of either of those. Uh, those are questions for Varus. The, it is an interesting material that actually I'm kind of curious about what it is, but uh, I don't know, so apologies. Will FM do install videos for these in the future? Maybe, it depends uh, on what we've got going through the shop, what our time schedule looks like, all that kind of stuff. So I'll give you a definite maybe on that.
but can't commit at this point. Uh, vaguely related, how effective are the Varus brake ducts with improving pad life on track? So that is not something that we sell anymore, which quite frankly makes me very sad because it is a gorgeous, gorgeous bit of kit and it is extremely nice. So those are brake ducts that replace, that are on this car. Hey, look at that. Um, so they replace the uh, DRLs right here. They bolt right in place. They're gorgeous carbon fiber, just like this. These may be prototypes or I think they're actually 3D printed and wrapped in fiberglass to make it work. But anyway, um, so they, they, uh, they do work quite well. We haven't done any testing. I believe Varus has, um, and they do sell those on their site. So go check them out and buy them because they're not cheap, but man, they are nice. They're very, very nice. Okay, what Varus product or combination allows for the best improvement in aero? So all of them basically is, is what you want to do. If you're just picking a single one, good question. Um, seat of the pants, I'd probably say diffuser, but I'm not an aero pro. So those that are might uh, disagree with me. Um, but ideally do the whole thing. That having been said, Again, on Varus's website, uh, they have a bunch of information there. They actually, and this kind of speaks to how thorough they are with everything. They have um, an information packet, which is just, uh, it's a bunch of well laid out, but quite technical, fairly technical, but digestible for the layman, uh, information on exactly what stuff does, the CFD plots, uh, all that kind of stuff so that you can see what's what and understand how they did it, why they did it, what it does and what it doesn't do and all that kind of stuff. So you can check that out on their site. Okay. So uh, as always, we've got links to the products in the description. So check that out. Um, if you guys have any ideas for videos that we should be doing, whether they're instructional installation videos, whether they're live videos, please let us know. We definitely would like to hear that. Um, as always, if you like this, please like it, subscribe, Drop us a comment, all that fun stuff, and come on back next week because we will be back for another FM Live. Thanks, guys.